Hello Himo friends and welcome to this new video. So today I want to talk to you about sparring and more in the specific the way in which we approach sparring. Now it's clear that there are many let's say way to approach sparring, many objectives. Uh, you can have whatever personal objective you want while approaching sparring. Maybe you want to try some kind of tactic or whatever which you just trained or learned. Uh, or maybe sparring has some kind of specific goal by itself. So it's some kind of specific sparring. But in this um, video, I want to talk about the, let's say, more, most common way of, uh, of spar, which is basically try to overcome the opponent with the smartest uh, solution possible in relation to his abilities, his uh, personal characteristic, and so on and so on. So try to analyze the opponent, which tactics he is uh, using, which techniques he is using, etc. So that's the most common way in which people spar, generally speaking, because it is also the way in which you actually train to overcome the opponent in the best way. And that's what I want to talk about. So sometimes it happens, and that's common to uh, many people I ended up talking about, also really experienced people, sometimes we end up thinking um, things like this. So, uh, okay, so I am hitting a lot my opponent in the hands, so it's getting boring, and maybe it's boring for him, so I should stop. Now, this actually is a bad thing to do, and uh, I'm going to explain you why. So, if you start thinking this, and uh, the best solution to hit the opponent is actually hitting his hands, we have true, let's say, outcome from this kind of thing. First of all, you are doing the right thing. So you are conditioning yourself in the right conditions to achieve the most, let's say, useful and the easy to reach goal, which is in this case, in this example, which I made, hitting the hands. The opponent, otherwise, is suffering from this thing. But we don't have to be concerned about this because he had to learn how to defend his hands or her hands. Because that's, that's the problem, right? So if you are able to hit the opponent in the hands, actually he's not able to defend them or he end up exposing them in certain situation, etc., etc. What you can do if you want to help him is after the sparring pointing out that thing. So maybe you can say, if you are, especially if you are the most experienced defensor between the two, you can say, yeah, I have noticed that you are exposing your hands in that situation. Did you see that I was getting you every time in that situ situation and the other, etc., while doing this and that? This is the best way in which you can help someone improving. Instead, when you start to feel that the opponent is getting bothered, let's say, by the situation in which you keep hitting him in the same way, changing the way in which you hit him may be a very bad idea because at the same time you are not finding the best solution which you already found and at the same time he's not training his uh, let's say most uh, um, I, I would say vulnerable gap in his defense and that's bad for both defenses instead if you keep doing the thing which works maybe I say one, but maybe are two or three, and the opponent ends up figuring out that he is uh, bad at dealing with this thing, he starts to improve. And that's a very good thing. So, trying to be kind in uh, inspiring, uh, in this sense at least, I mean, you don't have to crush the opponent every time you spar, but uh, being smart is good. So, being smart and keep keeping doing the same thing over and over again, if it works, is not bad. And uh, you have to try, at least if uh, your club has this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, idea that this thing is bad or uh, is just uh, a bad attitude in relation to the sparring partner, you have to try to change this thing. Because you are actually doing something good to your opponent. You are letting him experience what he is vulnerable to and try to overcome his problems. And, uh, and that's a good thing in sparring. That's a good thing in training and generally speaking in martial arts, combat sports, whatever. 
So, as I said before, this doesn't mean that you can't have other uh, objectives in sparring. That's absolutely uh, common for many people, for me too, to have different sparring sessions with different objectives. But when you are sparring in the most common situation, so the way in which I most commonly approach sparring this one, you want to overcome the opponent in the smart smartest way possible, be smart every single time. And so you're helping yourself in doing the right thing and the opponent too. So just think about uh, fencing as Tetris. So you have all these uh, bricks which have different shapes which are coming down and you are trying to place everything into the correct way. If you place the thing in the correct way, you are doing the best job because that's the goal of the game, right? If you are not placing it correctly but it's good enough, it's okay, but eh, you can do better. And then of course there is the option in which you do the stupidest thing uh, possible and uh, you lose the game in the end. So that's the same thing. You want inspiring to do the best way possible, the best thing possible in every single situation. And by doing so, as I said before, you are helping yourself and you're helping your opponent to grow up. So I hope this video will uh, be helpful for uh, some of you at least. Just share your uh, uh, point of view, your experience in the comment section. I will be happy to read them. Thanks for watching people. Remember that we are reaching 10,000 subs. I am really happy about this. So if you want to uh, just drop a sub, if you are not uh, subscribed to the channel, do it. I am looking forward to reach that interesting goal. I have a special video ready for you for this kind of, uh, let's say, little goal. And so I am looking forward to share it with you. So thanks for watching again. And uh, as always, see you next time.